Good morning. I'm on this lawn. Uh, I've been doing it for about six years and still no grass here. And uh, at some point, this land was probably cleared and the organic layer stripped away and nothing was done to remediate that scenario. So that's probably a contributing factor, but a lot of times this also happens from people doing low cutting and not giving the chance, the lawn a chance to build back an organic layer. Um, and up north, they can get away with these low cuts because their soil is so nutrient rich. But here, basically, well, all we have is sand. So for a lawn, we rely on a layer of uh, nutrient rich soil that lies above the sand layer. And when they get cut low, then the turf can't hold moisture. It evaporates right away, just as it would off of concrete. So you'll have the sun above, and then you'll have a million little suns down here in the form of sand and mica particles that reflect the sun back from both directions, and it kills every plant pretty much, except for the occasional weed. And uh, the problem is then the solar reflective thermal output of this lawn compared to the neighbor's lawn uh, see if I can get any image of that. Well, through those trees, you see the green lawn. There, the solar reflective thermal output in comparison is vastly different. So this contributes, I think, into uh, global warming issues um, and other environmental issues because now you don't have a lush lawn that, that produces uh, oxygen and and contributes to the uh, atmosphere. Instead, you have, uh, I had a call come in, I can't remember exactly where I was at on talking about this, but um, once that moisture is gone from the sun above and the million suns below, then the only thing that's gonna survive is weeds. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like the difference in a, in a wooded area between a canopied woods that have uh, uh, a, a full shading effect and then it has the rot down of the vegetation underneath consequently. Because it takes moisture to, to create rot and to create the organics. Um, without the moisture, you can't, you know. Uh, versus, it's like a canopied forest versus being in Texas where there's vast plains uh, and a few scrub oaks or something, you know. Um, so the environmentalists, they go around charging people to, you know, use less and get by with less. They want to rip up all the pavement and things that contribute to a better lifestyle when they could be addressing issues like this, that, um, everybody benefits because when they have a lawn they don't track sand in every time it rains it's not as hot in their lawn um it holds moisture better uh, there's just a million things that it's a plus plus because people benefit from a modification of behavior that also benefits the environment versus this agenda to take out infrastructure that they think is causing thermal uh, global thermal uh, issues the the paved roads they have a purpose that benefits people and that it lets life-saving care come to people it transports food and goods and services and you know all these other things so it's a hard sell to try to get people to give up something that's benefiting them and this would be an easy sell for them to say, hey, just don't cut your lawn so freaking short and uh, and it will help. And it helps uh, and, and they benefit from it and, and everybody else benefits from it. So I don't know uh, why people, they, they don't understand, I guess. Some of it is 
people come from different geographical regions and they don't bother to understand the geography um, of, well, not geography, but the, the scenario where they're at. So if they come from up north, they've scalped their lawn forever, it always comes back, uh, you know, it always comes back after a freeze and it's all brown. Well, it's not the same here. You deplete that organic layer and you'll look at this for five years. This is what you'll be seeing, if not longer. And they think, well, they cut it low and then, then it won't grow as fast, won't have to pay for cutting as often. Well, that's not true because when you cut it low, then the only thing that does survive is the weeds and the weeds grow back up really quickly versus a nice lawn of, of uh, homogenous seed. So the, the issue is, is they just, there's not enough knowledge uh, and understanding. And this here, every time there's a significant wind or rain, what little bit of organic that does manage to get developed on this lawn will get swept away every time. This, this will probably be like this for the next uh, 20 years because they want it cut short still. So there, there's no end to this. All right, I'm gonna get on to the next lawn. See ya. Yeah, what I meant to say earlier is people move from a different geographical region without understanding the geology of the area they're in and then they apply the same standard and that they thought they can get away with low cutting on um, their lawn like they did up north perhaps but it doesn't work the same here because we just don't have nutrients in our soil so this yahoo up here on the bike he pulls out in front of me which it happens you know i've pulled out in front of people as well but his vehicle has the capability of going getting up to speed in a very very quick rate did he no no he saw me coming up behind him and just chose to casually accelerate and then when he wanted to oh he was off like a you know so people complain about motorcyclists not being treated with respect and all this stuff well too many times it goes the other way so and, and basically people, the way they drive here in Florida is, is ridiculous. All right, I'm coming up to the next lawn, so I'll talk to you later.